Hello everybody, how you doing? This is Jeffrey Daniel again in Lagos, Nigeria. And today is the 6th of May, 2020. So, um, wow, here we are. We're still on lockdown, even though they've given it a little ease, but we're still on lockdown officially. And um, I just thought that I would just come back and share some more information with you because it seems that we, we have this uh, mutual relationship of giving and receiving and going back and forth with each other so anyway check this out um, to be honest with you for me to even share information and some people say like you know who am I you know I'm this I'm a dancer singer I'm an entertainer you know do I have any degrees in science and in medicine and virology and politics or anything like that you know and um, why would I even put myself in a you know, in an invidious position, which would be totally counter uh, productive to my career and my life because my career is predicated on popularity, you know. So if people found me to be, you know, invidious, they may feel like, you know, wow, you know. So, but anyway, I just, I just feel compelled to share information because after, you know, assimilating a lot of information and, uh, researching things and we're all in the same boat we're all in the same boat so you know why not and actually I might not have degrees and I might not be a specialist in certain subjects but I learn from those who are specialists and those who do have degrees you know so therefore you know uh, if, if you study into something and you become a student something then you do have the right to you know disseminate information to people you know what do you do the people who do have degrees how did they get them they went to school and learned from those who had the knowledge you know so it's all about you know just learning and sharing the knowledge and being careful that you don't run into too much you know fake knowledge out here because there's uh, there's just a lot of mendacious videos going around on YouTube you know I don't understand why people just put things out there just to put things out there just to and they know it's false they know it's misleading they know it's wrong but they just do it that's you know so just be careful of all the mendacity that's out there on the social media so um, I would like to say that while we are on this lockdown and before I said about reset which I still hold to that I think that we need to reset I really think we do now more so than ever because when you really look at what's happening and what's really going on I think it's universal law and men governments leaders people get so caught up into what they have established what they have created what what they have done and they're forgetting about universal law think about it did we create the universe no did we create the solar system? No. Did we even create this planet? No. Did we create water? No. Did we create air, oxygen? Did we create the wildlife and animals? I mean, we may take seeds and we can do, you know, bioengineering and, uh, and um, uh, well, well, actual uh, genetic engineering and we can splice plants and we can, you know, GMO, we can, we can create new things with things that are already here. But did we actually create the original thing? No which means that there is a law that is bigger and greater than us and it is governing things it's keeping the planets in line it's keeping our eight it used to be nine it's keeping our eight planets going around the sun it's holding everything it's keeping our galaxy in position that, that is, some people may contribute that to religion you know some people just say it, it's a, a unknown force Scientists say it's the, uh, you know, uh, intelligent design or whatever they want to call it. But there's something bigger than man and man is forgetting about that. Now think about this. All the great things that man has done, all the great things that man has created has come to a halt. It's been put on pause by the universal law. Financial markets, industries, schools, churches, government the sale of oil airlines everything has been put on pause churches everything is on pause right now think about that that's never happened in our lifetime we've had gas shortages and you know uh, 
different fluxes in, in the economy and things like that, but nothing has been so across the board totally shut down like now. We've been put on pause, and I attribute that to universal law. I think universal law has said enough is enough. Look where we're going. Look, look, look what direction you guys are going in. You guys are about to destroy everything and yourselves. Universal law has put us on pause. And I think if we don't take this opportunity now to really reflect on what we are doing and where we're at and where we're going, and if we don't take this opportunity to get it right, I think all is going to be lost forever. People, I think we're at the precipice of Third World War. You're expecting armies and bombs. It came at a little microorganism virus called Corona. And no one saw that coming. That little bitty thing that we can't even see with the naked eye has shut down our entire way of life. The world that they created, how they created it. Factories that are spewing pollution into the air. They say that they've got um, They've got trash floating in the ocean that is the size of a state. It's so much trash floating in the ocean. They say by the year 2000, maybe 30 something or 50 something, there's gonna be more plastic in the ocean than fish. What the heck are we doing? You know, um, the nuclear bombs. Come on, why would you have a stockpile of what? How many nuclear bombs? Well, you know that about three or four would just totally destroy the whole planet. Anyway, so you'd never get a chance to get to the, the ninth, the, the tenth, or the eleventh, or the twelfth nuclear bomb because everything would be gone. So why would, you, why would you even stockpile that many in the first place? The, look how people are thinking, you know? Uh, it goes all the way back to the Gatlin gun. Now we got a gun that we can just shoot and just kill maximum death toll with one gun. Now we've got weapons of mass destruction. Who sits down to think about how many people we can kill more conveniently? <laughs> and here we are with a virus. Now they're actually now finally coming out and, and saying that they suspect that it did come from a lab. Now you're going to have your people, it's going to be pro and cons because just some people say, oh no, you know, uh, to my knowledge and to, to my, you know, it's, uh, no, it, couldn't, it has to come from an animal and blah, 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 blah. Okay, fair enough. Then you got your people who know that this is unnatural. It doesn't move like anything that's been in nature before. And it's totally something had to have happened to get it to that point. And that sounds like something that's man-made. So th that's the debate that's going back and forth. We'll, it's going to be in time and we're going to figure out what's really going on and what has really happened. Okay, but um, in the meantime, like... It brought Tokyo to a standstill. Tokyo was so proud and so happy because they were going for the Tokyo Olympics, right? They spent billions of dollars for the Tokyo Olympics to the point that they were still denying it. They said, no, 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 the, the, the Olympics can go on. We're still gonna do it. And, and then the other countries are like, well, wait a minute, is it gonna be safe to travel? What about the safety of our athletes? And, and you know, coronavirus had been in Tokyo already because it went there on Yokohama by that ship that, that uh, what is the Dreamliner ship or whatever it's called that was there, right? So um, people are like, they were leery. They're like, well, why are we going there for the Olympics and we're going to go right into the cesspool of the coronavirus epicenter, which was at that time in Yokohama and in Tokyo. So they finally, you know, succeeded and they said, okay, we're not going to do it. Let's do it next year. Now think about this. Here they are spending billions of dollars to host the Olympic Games when the Fukushima nuclear plant is still spewing radiation into the ocean since 2011, since they had that big earthquake. And the best thing they could think about is, let's spend billions to host the Olympic Games when one of the worst disasters is happening, man-made disasters is happening right there on your shore in Fukushima, and you're preparing to host Olympic Games? Look at the way people are thinking this is the way people are thinking now let's go to China people are angry at China because of Wuhan viral 
explosion has happened there but think about it who made china how did china get to where they were in 1966 to 1976 they had the cultural revolution china was just climbing out of their past about 30 million people died of starvation around that time under uh, chairman mao and they had what did they have how did they get to where they are today because the greed and the complacency of the western world sending their garbage there to be processed sending their goods to be manufactured there nike is being manufactured there do you guys realize that apple phones are being manufactured in china they're being assembled there uh, do you realize that all the goods are there because it was cheaper to have it done there and bring it back into the west to be sold at premium prices so the labor was cheap the labor it was more convenient for the workforce but in doing that you invariably made china the richest nation on the planet they didn't see that coming did they and now here china is they stepped up to the plate and they're calling shots they want to buy up africa they want to build the new silk road going through uh asia through europe the, one of the greatest infrastructural projects in, in modern times all these things are going on who created it the west did you know america has lost this slot as the world superpower as the leader of the free world that that slot has just slipped out from under america's butt and we're watching it happen in real time um i just want to look for my thoughts because i'm trying to get everything together that i wanted to say um one good thing about being on lockdown and being here is that i have really come in in touch with my circadian rhythm rhythm do you guys know what your circadian rhythm is it's like the rhythm of the earth's rotation the sun coming up the sun going down and night and that's animals live by their circadian rhythm basically humans should do that's why we are supposed to go to sleep at night but we invented the lights we invented TVs so we invented all these things nightclubs and cinemas and things that keep us up at night while we're supposed to be sleeping there's a certain time that you should be eating in the morning there's a certain time that you should not eat later than in the evening because then your digestive system isn't working well and you should be sleeping but we're defying all those rules because man is selfish we want to do what we want to do not what we're supposed to do you know um, animals they move totally by their circadian rhythm and by the seasons you know when they a certain season they go into heat a certain season they hibernate a certain season they flock to different parts of of the world you know animals and and, and the biggest uh, animal migration is across the savanna in east africa where you can see a multitude of wildebeest and all these things just it's just like an exodus it's just annually elephants they have their time that they do that humans we just live on our own clock we just go by our own will and that and it's, it's very selfish and it's killing us it's hurting us so I've really got in touch with my circadian rhythm because we're not getting up to go to work we're not getting up to keeping up with this appointment and that so you're just at home and now I'm waking up very early in the morning doing my meditation if you want to call it prayer I'll give you that and um, I'm sleeping at, at better hours now too and I'm coming out and getting my sun in the morning doing my sunbathing getting my melanin my uh, vitamin D you know so and, and that's why I'm making these videos while I'm out getting my vitamin D in the morning doing my sun bath you know so you guys should get more in touch with your circadian rhythms if you can you know because that's the natural rhythm we're supposed to be on the earth rotates at uh, relatively 24 hours you know we get with the 12 hours or so of sunlight and then the next 12 hours or so of darkness or whatever there's there's a method to all of that and we're part of nature we are part of nature it's not that's nature out there oh that's no we're in nature we are part of nature we are nature <laughs> so stop like you know pushing it aside um some people might think that this is the hand of a god that's putting everything on pause I don't like to use the word God and uh, 
I got into it with Howard. We were on tour one time, and I even got bold because after I, I started learning things and finding out things, and I figured, I found out that the word God was never used in antiquity. In the biblical times, no one said God. No one prayed to a God because it wasn't a God. There's a creator. The word God comes in 6 AD, 600 AD. In the 6th century, it's a Germanic term coming from the Germanic people. The word God was never used before. What the Europeans did was when they saw the spirituality system in Kemet, ancient Egypt and that, then they wanted to be a part of it and they took it and they made it their own. They humanized the Creator. That's why they say, He's looking down upon us. He's watching. Pray to Him. Only God will save us. Can God be human? Can God be humanized? Of course not, because God created human. What is it? If, if you're Christian or whatever, if you believe in the Bible, if you're religious, look, look at Genesis. It said, in the beginning, there was the Word. It didn't say there was a man, there was a person. There was a Word. That's the consciousness. And the consciousness brought everything into existence. First, you have the consciousness. From the consciousness comes the energy. And that is the thinking. And that is the, the formulating of things. And then there's the energy of things. And then there's the physical matter. And that's the last part of it. And here we are experiencing that consciousness in a physical form. Does that make sense to any of y'all? Okay. Anyway, um, if you guys agree with what I say, if you guys disagree with what I say, that, that's fine. I'm just, you know, putting the information out there, sharing my thoughts with, with you all, and then you guys can take it from there, you know? Um, I don't think there's any one absolute, just like Einstein's theories. Now, modern-day scientists are kind of turning over some of his theories. So I don't think nothing is so finite that it can't be uh, embellished upon or it can't be improved upon or it can't evolve. And that's what's happening. Uh, the more uh, technology you know, advances, we tend to be going back and evolving certain theories. And remember, just because a scientist says something or declares something and, and they come up with theories, remember they're theories, the theory of evolution. It doesn't mean Darwin was absolutely right. It was his theory. Okay? So don't let the word theory throw you off. Don't let the word science throw you off. Science is just the observation of things that are and our understanding of those things. That's what science is. You know? So just because someone's a scientist, you know, maybe they, maybe they are right. Maybe what they said is correct and, and concise. But maybe that can even be later improved upon. You know? Uh, one mistake a lot of people are making is because of uh, the media and movies and things like that. You're thinking of uh, science and space as like a Star Trek and stuff like that. You, do you realize that when you're out in the sun and getting your sunshine, the sun is about 93 something million miles away from the earth. It takes the sun rays about eight minutes to reach the earth, moving at the speed of light, because light is the fastest thing in the galaxy, in the universe, so that we know. Isn't that funny that the corona of the sun is saving us from the corona here on earth? <laughs> Isn't that ironic? <laughs> so anyway... Um, Another thing I want to talk about, be careful with these hand sanitizers and all these antibacterial things. They're fine, but don't go overboard with it because what's happening is if you use too much antibacterial soaps, it's getting rid of the good bacteria that's on your skin because we have bacteria, good bacteria that fights off viruses and bad bacteria. So you don't want to just get rid of it. So it's better to use soap. And that's what they, they have said that too. Use soap. You know, maybe hand sanitizers if you, if you don't have soap and water or something like that. But just don't just go crazy on hand sanitizer, hand sanitizer, because all you're doing is stripping your hand and your skin of very good bacteria that's meant to be there to help protect your body. Because what the good bacteria does is send a message to your body to help fight off invading viruses and bad bacteria. And um, it's called uh, biosemiotics. Biosemiotics is when your good bacteria 
communicates with attacking viruses and they get rid of it okay so and what you have to do is replace it with probiotics so when you lose, you know just like chemotherapy they say if you got cancer chemotherapy let's just destroy all the cells because you've got some bad cells let's destroy everything that's the thinking of modern science that's what's happening with the sanitizer they're destroying all bacteria okay so you have you have to get probiotics to replace your good bacteria and there are foods that are good in probiotics it's a lot of fermented food things like sauerkraut things like um, pickles things like yogurt what else we got there miso kimchi the Koreans of kimchi nattos which is the fermented beans uh, that they use in Japan I love natto you know they smell like coffee beans or something they're really sticky but I, I love it anyway so I've been eating a lot of probiotic foods without even realizing it you know so you guys have to go for probiotic foods they help replace you know the bacteria that we're losing and so you guys can look up all this stuff you can research all this stuff and see for yourselves so these are my thoughts for today I just wanted to share some of this with you guys so remember there's a universal law that we have to obey to because that universal law is really what's governing everything not the US government, not the UK government, not the Chinese government. Yet yeah, they have laws set up and they have per perimeters that they govern. But outside of that, when hurricanes come, you bow down. When tornadoes come, you bow down. When tsunamis come, you bow down. When earthquakes and floods come, you bow down. That's universal law. Right now, the world is bowing down to universal law. Everything is on pause. Take this opportunity, you guys, so we can try to reset everything and get everything back on track, okay? All right. I love you all. Stay safe. Remember, spread the love. Make love great again. Make love great again. Jeffrey Daniel, Lagos, Nigeria. Thank you.